My name is Quinton McKellar and the ideas that I want to talk about today relate to the future of food. And in order to uh, discuss these ideas, I'm going to introduce you to my mother. Her name's Betty, and uh, we were very pleased last year to celebrate Betty's 90th birthday. But I would like to take you forward 10 years, and we're about to celebrate Betty's 100th birthday. And I have to say, she's still in ruddy good health. There was a time in 2023 when we were a bit worried about her health, but when the predictive analytics became uh, much more easily available, uh, her health improved and it has been incredibly good since then. She now wears a wristwatch which tells us and her uh, about her heart, both rhythm and uh, rate. It tells her what her blood pressure is and tells her about her pulse. She also now has one of these little diagnostic kits with a micro lance which takes a blood sample once a week and that blood sample is utilised in a diagnostic kit which feeds up into her app. She can also take a urine sample which of course she's now 100, um, uh, providing a urine sample doesn't seem to be a problem for her and we have a, a, a diagnostic kit for that too. All, these, all this information is fed onto an app on her phone which she looks at and which gives her a thumbs up emoji. At the same time, it orders her a nutritious meal. Now, today, the meal which it's ordering is going to be a pizza. The app asks her if she would like any particular shape of pizza. Now, she can just about remember an American president called Trump. So she says, hmm, I'd like one shaped like Donald Trump. This information is immediately downloaded to the local food preparatory unit in the west of Glasgow. Um, within this unit, the 3D food printer now begins to mix the dough to access the tomato uh, uh, sauce, to access some um, meat substitute and of course some cheese. It puts these into the injectors and very quickly out appears a pizza with the uh, characteristic bouffant hairstyle of Donald Trump. As this uh, pizza is carried off uh, in a druid to my mother's house, the inventory system in the preparatory unit orders uh, further flour, tomatoes, meat substitute and cheese uh, through its blockchain ledger. Now the flour which uh, uh, is used in the pizza in 2030 has come from Canada and of course Canada has done tremendously well out of global warming both the rises in temperature the increases in rainfall and the increases in carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere have increased the productivity of the genetically modified wheat which is grown on the Great Plains. Um, sadly of course soya and wheat from the uh, Midwest of America, particularly in Nebraska and Kansas, and also from the Mato Grosso in uh, Brazil, is now almost unavailable as those two areas have uh, become uh, very much drier and almost uh, uh, deserts have almost been created. Uh, the emoji on uh, my mother's phone signals a uh, little oil uh, rig symbol which worries my mother a little bit not too much because it's a green oil rig uh, 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 marker now what this tells her is that there is diesel used in the combustion system uh, uh, in the production of the wheat which has been used for the creation of our pizza but it's used very efficiently and of course the huge combines used to harvest the wheat in the prairies have become very much more efficient since they became entirely autonomous and did away with human uh, uh, support altogether. Of course, the planting of the wheat is now done by drones and these fire pods into the soil which contain both the seed and an appropriate amount of fertilizer. Now this uh, has the combined effect, of course, of being incredibly efficient in terms of planting, but it also 
uh, improves the soil quality because it's not being compacted by uh, huge heavy tractors driving over it all the time. The, the drones are also used now for spraying and of course uh, because of the satellite imagery these can be used to target areas of the wheat which may be uh, requiring spraying with, with herbicides or pesticides or fungicides and this can be done incredibly accurately but of course because much of the wheat is now genetically modified and it's been modified in such a way as to make it resistant to many of the pathogens present uh, very little spray is now required uh, you know, for the production of this grain. The tomatoes which go to make the tomato sauce are accessed much more locally. They're accessed in, from some of the uh, huge uh, vertical uh, production systems which have, have, have grown up round about the major metropolises. Uh, in Glasgow they've grown up in the Clyde Valley of course, in London, in the Lee Valley and these use hydroponics to grow tomatoes and other vegetables very efficiently. There was a bit of a worry that the cost of vegetables would increase disproportionately because of a, a scarcity of phosphate. Uh, and, and this was triggered by the fact that China began to buy huge tracts of land in Morocco where much of the, many of the deposits of phosphate exist. But of course, our relationships with China have warmed substantially since the, uh, what, what was called the, the Hong Kong summer of 2020 and 20, 2021. And of course my mother is incredibly pleased because these um, large vertical greenhouses which grow the vegetables are e effectively sterile. So there's no need for pesticides or herbicides or fungicides in those environments. And of course now the um, robotic systems which pick the fruit and vegetables, the cost of the capital behind these robotic systems is now cheaper than it uh, is to import uh, immigrant labour, which of course was done extensively by the agricultural community in the United Kingdom. The meat substitute um, could have of course uh, been actually cultured meat, so the exact replica of livestock derived meat but grown in petri dishes but for my mother's particular physiology and pathology uh, uh, the um, meat substitute is a better option because although it's quite high in salt it has very low cholesterol. The taste of meat substitute has of course improved dramatically and it's improved because firstly because of the mouth feel has been improved because the mixture of canola and coconut oil which go to uh, uh, supplement the, um, the chickpea base of the, the, the meat substitute now give it a, a wonderful uh, mouth feel very similar to meat but more particularly because heme which is of course the uh, um, oxygen carrying component of red blood cells the iron containing component has now been synthesized using genetically modified yeasts and of course it's heme which gives meat that uh, juicy red appearance and also that marvelous meaty taste and so meat substitutes are now uh, uh, very tasty and highly effective and of course for uh, my mother who's needing to have uh, a low cholesterol intake they're, they're, they're uh, very desirable. There has been some concern uh, 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 because there are now, of course, no livestock south of Liverpool except in um, uh, parks and, uh, you know, for uh, uh, zoological purposes. But actually people, I think, generally believe that the reduction in uh, the environmental impact as a consequence of livestock production is, uh, the, the balance is beneficial. Now, as the products arrive at the um, processing unit outside Glasgow, their provenance is checked, and it's checked using DNA barcoding. So, of course, the DNA from the tomatoes, uh, from the, 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 the um, components in the chickpea, uh, uh, the coconut and uh, canola, and in the flour, are checked to ensure that they are actually uh, products um, which have come from the uh, required sources 
that were uh, uh, stipulated in the blockchain ledger. And of course, the DNA barcodes are subsequently consumed by the, the customer at the end of the day. The cheese is slightly different. The cheese is now made entirely in the preparatory unit. And genetically modified yeast produces exact replicas of the casein and the whey, which were produced in natural milk. And of course, the selected uh, um, genetic material has been selected from those cattle and sheep which produced the very best cheese. We can also now get milk replicate from the uh, preparatory unit. And of course, uh, once it's been filtered, even although it's uh, uh, produced by genetically modified yeasts, the, the proteins are produced in that way, of course the filtering takes out all the genetically modified organisms so it can be sold as uh, GMO-free. The packaging which the pizza is uh, produced in is biodegradable plastic and that biodegradable plastic is produced by cellulose and lignin which are now grown in plants in the estuaries and in the less productive lands across the United Kingdom. And they've resulted of course in a massive reduction in the pollution of our estuaries and our, our seas with plastic material. Of course we no longer actually uh, fish the oceans for our fish supplies. These are all now produced in fish farms and that became uh, much more economically viable when algae uh, were modified to produce the omega-3 which is a requirement for the, the growth of fish. Um, on its arrival at my uh, mother's house uh, she of course opens the packet and cooks the pizza and as she's looking at it she um, fondly remembers the days before the coronavirus pandemics of the 20s when she used to buy her own pizza base and indeed she would uh, buy fresh tomatoes and cheese and she kept these in what um, appeared to be a novelty at the time uh, was a smart fridge and this smart fridge had a thermometer it had an in inventory system so it could tell when supplies of various uh, products were running down and it also had the facility to alert her if any bacteria or fungi were growing on any of the products in her fridge and she could then dispose of those. And at that time she would have products from 20 or so different countries in her fridge. Now of course she just keeps one bottle of chilled sherry in the fridge and she keeps that just for an emergency because the druid which is coming from the preparatory unit sometimes takes more than 30 minutes to get to her. So this scenario, uh, using my mother as the example, is of course not science fiction. Almost every component of it is now science fact. The DNA barcoding and the omega-3 production from the algae are both at prototype stages, but almost everything else is of course uh, now available to us. You're probably aware that the plant-based meats used now in, for instance, the Greg's veggie, burger, ve veggie burgers uh, and sausage rolls have been credited with increasing the profits in that company. Whether livestock will be consigned to parks I think remains to be seen uh, uh, but certainly the growth of both livestock and indeed many of our crop products will become far more technological uh, than agricultural and the vegetables will certainly be, be being grown in the uh, hydroponic systems in these vertical farms. These already exist and they are of course becoming more popular. Now, uh, in 2030, when my mother is 100, we predict that there will be 8.5 billion people on the planet. And 60% of those people will be living in cities. Now that compares with 2 billion and 20% of people living in cities when she was born in 1930. And of course, at the same time, there will be a billion more middle class people, many of them in China, and uh, in Southeast Asia. And of course we've seen last year that the realities of global warming have become I think much more real to people and this has been of course associated with the campaigns by young people. It remains to be seen whether uh, our school age uh, uh, children will now all be cycling to school but certainly they have raised the spectre of global warming. 
And of course, we know that agriculture is a major contributor. Agriculture currently uh, uh, takes up something like 40% of land use, 70% of all fresh water that's used by humanity, and it produces 30% of greenhouse gases. It's also been attributed, uh, or certainly accused, of uh, reducing biodiversity, and it's done so because, of course, we've been looking for the very best varieties and uh, growing those to the exclusion of many others. But of course, we've also had negative impact on pollinators. And of course, as a consequence of deforestation, much of which has been uh, carried out to increase agricultural land availability, that has had a major impact on biodiversity as well. Now, we also know that the political economics of the world is going to change quite substantially. We know that there's going to be a movement of that economic uh, uh, centre from the, the, uh, the northwest to the, the southeast. And at the same time, we know that the temperate and subtropical areas are going to move from the equator northwards. At the same time, well, north and south, we also know, of course, that there is a movement for states to purchase tracts of land, just as in the scenario uh, my proposal was that uh, uh, China may have been buying tracts of land in Morocco. And all these things are going to contribute to really redraw the trade routes across the planet. We're going to live in a different uh, environment altogether. And of course, by 2050, so that's effectively 30 years from now, we're going to need 60% more food to supply the population of the planet, and we're going to need 55% more fresh water and a staggering 80% more energy to produce that food. Now, currently, there are 570 million farms on the planet, but interestingly, only 4% of those are in what we might categorise as uh, you know, high income countries and three quarters of all farms now are less than a hectare in size and we believe that as a consequence of further urbanisation and of course uh, uh, as a consequence of global warming many of these smaller farms are going to be significantly stressed in the future. What about the food production systems that I was talking about? Well the first thing to say is that many of the automated systems associated with uh, unmanned vehicles are already with us. Many of the tractors that you see in the fields uh, you know, in the United Kingdom are already largely driven automatically. Uh, and I think it's a, a relatively small step to uh, uh, remove the drivers altogether. Of course, we'll see improvements in genetics, in nutrition and in disease control, both in livestock and, of course, in, uh, in, in crops and in our vegetables and uh, fruit growing and vertical farming is a reality it's with us now of course it will become even more I think uh, embraced as the robotic systems increase and improve and the robotic systems are improving because they're better able to visualize and of course better able to pick the the fruits and vegetables which we are growing interestingly even in livestock robotic systems are now uh, prevalent to a very large extent in in Holland, something like 22% of all uh, milk units, all dairies, are now utilising robotics to milk their cattle. Now, whether the uh, scenario which I presented, which uh, uh, suggested that milk replicate would replace milk, ever comes to pass remains to be seen. But of course, the benefits, if you like, of milk replicate, utilising, of course, the exact copies of the proteins of uh, cow's milk, but of course you can reduce dramatically the concentrations of uh, cholesterol and lactose in those products. Of course, there is no danger that they're likely to be contaminated with antibiotics or, or hormones. And of course, we've also seen a massive rise in the uh, development of uh, milk uh, equivalents. So things like almond milks, um, rice milks, uh, uh, oat milks and so on and these are now sold on the same shelves as milk in our supermarkets the, the sale of these alternatives has grown by 60% in the last five years and is now worth 21 billion dollars uh, uh, globally so a massive increase in the utilisation of those products 
Will drones be used? Well, they're certainly already being used for mapping. They're being used for analysing uh, and diagnostics. Will they be used for planting and spraying? Well, possibly if the uh, payload which they currently carry can be increased substantially, they could be used in that way. And of course, our supply chains with blockchain logistics, DNA barcoding to ensure the provenance of, of uh, products, and of course, perhaps not in our fridges, but certainly the use of smart thermometers and inventory systems will improve cold chain uh, transportation. And I do believe that we will see uh, uh, products being transported by uh, certainly, if not drones, certainly druids, which will be automated car type uh, delivery systems. What about the fridge? Is my scenario that the, the fridge has seen uh, you know, better times uh, going to come to pass? Well, the scenario which I painted probably uh, applies particularly to uh, single person households. You might imagine someone living on their own wishing to have a, a meal delivered, a specific meal delivered, rather than preparing a meal for the family. Now, it is, uh, uh, I think, interesting to understand that there are now 80 million single person households in China alone. So the idea that there might not be a market for this sort of product is probably not true. And we are likely, I believe, to see a, a significant expansion in these sort of delivery systems. However, I do believe that the smart fridge together with those sort of delivery systems make a very powerful team. And so I would suggest that perhaps the fridge uh, has still got some uh, future to it at the present time. Of course, the diagnostic systems which my mother was using, uh, used for healthcare, are likely to be, but we have many of these diagnostic systems already. Um, uh, they just haven't been commercialised effectively and they will be in the future. Whether they'll be uh, sufficiently cheap and sufficiently convenient to be taken up uh, more extensively, I think, remains to be seen. But I want to leave you, though, with a thought, because much of what I've been saying, um, the technology behind agriculture, the technology behind human health and so on, fails to grasp the fact that food is also a hugely important part in our culture. The breaking of bread, of course, by families and by communities, has been a way of bringing people together for generations. And of course, the production of books uh, on cookery and on baking, uh, the uh, television uh, shows now which focus on, on cookery, and indeed the celebrity which has, become, uh, has come as a consequence of those shows, uh, suggests to me that people still have an interest in food, and in particular, they have an interest in artistry around the, the, the making of food. And I would suggest again that the lockdown period has really uh, increased that interest. And I know my own family are baking their own bread, which we certainly didn't do prior to the lockdown. So I do hope that the technologies that I've, talk, uh, uh, that I've spoken about remain our servants and don't become our masters. And I hope that people still in 10, 20 and 30 years time are able to enjoy the marvellous uh, tastes and variety which exist in our foodstuffs. Thank you.